Hi everybody, and welcome to Wrestling Las Vegas. I'm Joe. To my left, Joseph won the guys on the Star K1985 card Magnum TA, his nickname. There's America's Fart Frog, Pat Young. Oh, he, he actually has a much different name and they added in this pay per view, but I'll get to that one later. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, <laughs> here comes the punishment for uh, tying Raw Rumble weekend. Okay. Uh, NWA Starcade 1985. This is uh, pre WCW by like six years. Okay. Uh, this is also actually actually pretty, pretty interesting time in wrestling in general. Uh, we're just off the first WrestleMania from Vince. Uh, Starcade actually had just started uh, like three years before, or two years before. Uh, we're like right. We're, we're literally like the like a month, a month and a half, right before the Four Horsemen uh, start up. Uh, and we're, and funny enough, I actually found this out looking at up, looking up other reviews and seeing what other people thought about matches. Was that this was this is what uh, the uh, Hard Times promo from Dusty Rhodes, the the famous Hard Times promo from Dusty Rhodes, mm -hmm. was leading to the main event of this match, uh, okay. which ended up be, which is Ric Flair. Versus Dusty Rhodes for the NWA World Title, All right. uh, and it also has a pretty standout match too from a lot of people for the United States Title. It's a steel cage I quit match. Okay. Uh, Magnum TA versus Tully Blanchard. Uh, but we get to the first match, which is Crusher Khrushchev, uh, aka Smash Demolition Smash, right. or Repo Man if you prefer. Which I don't think he does, so look, don't mention it about that, that to him. Uh, versus Sam Houston, who was in fact Jake Roberts' half brother. I didn't even stop that one. Um, this match, this match was. It's kind of hard to describe. It was well wrestled, uh, but it wasn't necessarily exciting for an opener. Uh. It wasn't necessarily. It kind of was flat almost, but it wasn't bad. Uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Going into it, because actually, I rewatched the f first match uh, when I. Uh, I'm trying to find my words here. You rewatched the first match after you left the basement yes. Friday night. After you watched it with me. Yes. Uh, and it actually wasn't that bad as I thought it was. When I watched it the second time. Okay. Uh, the other standout of this match is that there's a referee uh, who referees a couple other matches tonight that is wearing all yellow, matching yellow top but, uh, polo shirt, <laughs> a black belt, and matching yellow pants. Uh, he sort of looked like the man in the yellow hat from Curious George. Uh, how. Uh, the finish in the match came with uh, Crusher Khrushchev knocking off uh, Sam Houston's leg to get the 1 2 3 count off the clothesline, I believe it was. Uh, and we, the next match, it's, um, it's the Raging Bone Manny Fernandez <laughs> versus Abdullah Butcher in a Mexican death match. Now you're asking yourself, what does a Mexican death match exactly entail? Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Since I have them sold out, let's say Santa Claus. Not at all. <laughs> Not sure <laughs> Santa Claus. Essentially, it was a hardcore sombrero on a pole match. <laughs> I'm not making this up either. Oh, no, I know. That's what we, I showed that. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, and this match actually also starts a trend. Oh god. That happens. Um on match depletion. That that there is a lot of blood on this pay-per-view. There is more blood on this pay-per-view uh, than the ECW one we had a couple weeks ago. Oh really? Yeah, yeah that wasn't even blood. That was really hard work. Yeah. <laughs> um Which was actually a disappointment for each other. And to me this match was, was they literally start both of them start bleeding within a minute. Uh, I was I was in the middle of eating dinner at the time watching this, and every time I looked down, uh, the first time I looked down, Absolute Butcher started bleeding out of nowhere. I'm not surprised by that. That one. 
And, and then I went back down for another bite, and Manny Fernandez started bleeding. So, uh, the match ends with Abdullah the Butcher running into the <laughs> running into the turnbuckle where the pole is, and Manny Fernandez climbing up and grabbing the sombrero. Uh, this match got f for me. This was terrible. Uh, Wait, I think did, I think did... I forgot to give the first one the match. No, uh, Kersha Khrushchev and Sam Houston. I ended up giving that a D. Okay. And Manny Fernandez and Abdul the Butcher Mexican death match. Sombrero in a pole. Got enough. Just because the idea of a sombrero on the pole. <laughs> and then the match happened and it didn't really save me either, so. Uh, the next match is Cowboy Ron Bass versus Black Bart, or as this uh, review I had, just to remind me of certain things, says Black Bull. His name is actually Black Bart. Okay. And before before I forget even further, that I would like to thank uh, Terrence Smith, who uh, ha who put his review on uh, WordPress.com and my journey through wrestling. So thank you, Terrence Smith, for the review I'm using for notes. Uh, again, it's uh, Cowboy Ron Bass versus Black Bart, uh, Texas Bull Rope match. If uh, Ron Bass wins, he gets five minutes with J.J. Dillon in a Bull Rope match. And this is this is sort of like how I was thinking. Uh, this card would go like that typical match that probably didn't didn't have a place in the '90s or even further uh, where where I got into wrestling. Uh, bull rope matches rarely, if ever, entertain me. Uh, like like sometimes I get why they do them. Uh, Sting Invader is the best one. Yeah, Sting Invader. Uh, what I call it, the White Castle Fear Match or something. They called it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the best one. Uh, well, plus that one had pitfalls, I believe, or not the same. Yeah, too. but it was, it was just kind of dull watching two men beat each other with a rope and cowbell. Is, was this oh, post no. or hit the turnbuckle sort? No. These are normally the kind of wood that but here, but it all has that talent anymore. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was essentially a brawl with a bull rope. Uh, and it, and it wasn't really exciting at all. It was actually kind of bad. Uh, uh, I believe uh, Ron Bass got the win off a cowbell shot. Uh, I gave the match an F. Uh, and since Ron Bass won, we got five minutes with J.J. Uh, Dillon and Ron Bass in a Texas Bull Rope match. That's not awesome. Uh, for some reason, J.J. Dillon took his shirt off, and yes, he and yet he was probably in better shape than Black Bart. <laughs> he, he was not in good shape. It was just it was just it was just slightly better than Black Bart. Uh, and his match was also slightly better than Black Bart. It wasn't great. It wasn't good. <laughs> but it was but it was better than the previous match. Uh, just because it started off with the excitement that J.J. Dillon actually played the smart heel, got in the ring, and immediately started tacking him after the previous pinfall. Uh, however, the insanity ensues where a ref bump happens, which happens a couple times in the night. I'm not going to lie, this, it happened pretty frequently where I was starting to get a little annoyed with it. Uh, that Black Bart sneaks back into the ring... Uh, and I believe he, I believe he hits, uh, Ron Bass with the cowbell. And throws J.J. Dillon on top. J.J. Dillon, J.J. Dillon gets the clean pin fall. <laughs> I, I gave it an F plus just because it, it was horrible, but it was better than the previous Bora match. Uh, up next is I didn't grade this, but it's it's worth noting the Barbarian versus Super Superstar Billy Graham in an arm wrestling match. Didn't the Superstar Billy Graham ask it in the NWA? Yeah. April 
Uh, why you're having an arm wrestling match on your biggest show of the year, I don't know. Uh, but they decided, and the winner would get ten thousand dollars. It was the the general arm wrestling match where the heel and babyface lock up. The heel starts dominating, 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 and then the face just just comes back. And wins. So superstar Billy Graham uh, won that one. He wins the ten thousand dollars right before their match for, for the night. Uh, if you want me to grade it, uh, why? <laughs> uh, Barbarian's manager attacks Billy Graham before the match starts. Uh, and then the match happens, which it, it's, it is just barely gradable. It's short. However, it, it, it literally goes to the end. Then the match comes in like three minutes. Uh... Billy Graham is literally has him the bear hug, uh, Barbarian the bear hug. Barbarian has his hand raised uh, twice, has his hand raised a third time, and holds it up. And then his manager slips in and hits Billy Graham with the cane. So I, I'm not sure why he waited until his hand was still sticking up the third time <laughs> to attack him, but Billy Graham wins on the DQ. Uh, F. Uh, see, <laughs> here's a good shot, if you'd say it, of the referee in yellow tights. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Just so you can see it again, Joe. Yes. It looks like a banana, not pajamas. <laughs> a shout out to uh, PBS there. <sighs> uh, next is a very interesting match. Uh, Terry Taylor, the champion versus Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Not not Buddy Rogers or Ric Flair. <laughs> Buddy Landell. Uh, yeah. Is his gimmick supposed to be a joke since you're the wrestling story? Yes. Uh, okay, it is supposed to be a joke, right? Yeah. Close Ric Flair's in the same call for you. Yeah, yeah alright. Uh, for the and the the championship is for the national heavyweight championship. Now, you realize, I mentioned before, the United States Championship is on this card, and in the same company. I'd also get the Tower Force back in the day. It might, it might be another Tower Force match, too. But, but why have... But it might be like the Mid-Atlantic... It might be Mid-Atlantic's mid-card belt. But why would... Yeah, Mid-Atlantic has belts on here. Uh, but why would they have a national title? Wouldn't be, the United States title be the national title? Yeah, but the NWA, even though they're all under the NWA branch, they're technically different companies. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's for the National Heavyweight Championship. Or maybe the right main belt. Whatever the hell that means. It means the United States Heavyweight Championship. Uh, <laughs> and overall, it actually wasn't too bad. Uh, again, uh, Terry Taylor is actually a pretty good wrestler. This is definitely... Pretty uh, cobble doodle do, uh, but he but he's actually a pretty good wrestler. Um, and Buddy Landell surprisingly also put on his work boots that day, uh, and it wasn't and it wasn't too bad. Uh, I gave match a C minus. Okay. The match was pretty straightforward too, so there was, there's not really there's not really much to say about it. Uh, Anyway, I'll go straight to the next match. It was the Minnesota Rec Crew, which is the Andersons, Arn and Ollie, versus Wahoo McDaniels and Billy Jack Haynes. Uh, it, this match was technically more your simple tag match. Uh, and at this point, I also had flashes of the revival from the Andersons. Oh, I think you say it. Yeah, I, I definitely say it. Oh, okay. uh, and... And also, as a side note, Billy Jack Haynes may be the only guy, only wrestler I've ever known that is built from Oregon. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. For some reason, I thought that was interesting to know that. Uh, again, this is a general straightforward tag match. It wasn't, it was actually pretty good. Uh, I ended up giving it a 
see. Uh, wasn't my pipe bomb? Or was she just, for her bar pillow, just live in Portland, like, he was not built for her? I don't think he was ever built for Portland. Okay. He didn't look at Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think you're right, he was. Okay. Uh, the next match is definitely probably the most memorable match of the night. I'll, I'll actually go online and say it was probably the best. Uh, it was the uh, Steel Cage I Quit match. The reason uh, I picked this pay-per-view, and I had a reason, it was the 43rd anniversary of the United States title. And I always hear this match clean today. So there you go. I had a reason for my thing. Right, uh, well, anyway, Steel Cage I Quit match. Tully Blanchard versus Magnum TA. Uh, which, is which is weird. I'm, I'm not sure why they had the Steel Cage up when... A uh, fun fact about this, it actually happened in two different cities, in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Atlanta. Uh, and, they were, and each match would switch back and forth in locations. Uh, a much better way to do two different locations than what WWE would do the exact same year and do it from three locations. For the first hour in another place, one hour in another place, and then the third, third hour in another place. And two! WrestleMania 2. I will, I will know where Vince got his ideas from. Oh, probably this show. Uh, probably, yes. And then he won up there by going to Chicago. This also happened after uh, an announced 15 minute intermission, obviously, on the WWE Network that they just showed, they just went directly into the next, directly into uh, the next half of the show. I can never watch it here. Yeah, yeah that, that would be weird. The Ring of Honor, I finally found the first, sh first stream of the show that I'm like, Okay. It was on Ring of Honor's website. Well, well, when we have the membership? Yeah, but no, I'm trying to remember the year that I have show for free. I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, well, I finally found it. They had a 30 minute intermission in the middle of the show. That's weird. No, no, no. They didn't have intermission on the screen for 30 minutes. Well, anyway, I getting, clean the basement. getting back to the Steel Cage I Quit match, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Steel Cage because oh, I've been <laughs> because the match, the tag team match that happens a little later. Uh, but anyway, getting back to Tully and Magnum, uh, I thought this this was a really good match. Uh, it's it's not the flashy I Quit matches you see or the violent, well. Violent in a different way compared to nowadays, where you would have more spots. Right. This was pretty much straight up punk, punch, punch, kicking. This was, this was a fight. Uh, Is this the one with the eye? Yeah, okay. exactly. Uh, I know we all. Spoiler alert, I'll bring it up now. Uh, the finish came with, uh, I believe it was Baby Doll through a chair. Uh, literally, you just see a chair fly into the ring. Right, and, and that And Baby Doll is literally just there. Uh, so I'm guessing it was her. Uh, she throws in a wooden chair. Uh, Tully starts breaking the chair and gets like a jagged piece and try and search to try to jam the wood like s stake, I guess, or spoke into uh, Magnum's eye. Magnum reverses it, grabs the stake, and jams it into straight into his head. Uh, in which. Uh, Holy Blanchard was asked, do you quit? He screamed, yes, yes, yes. Although, he did not say, I quit. So technically, he can get by with saying he didn't quit and he didn't lose the match. Uh, yeah, Magna TA wins the United States Championship. Again, different from the National Heavyweight Championship. Right. The United States Heavyweight Championship. Uh... But yeah, this was not the style we'd see where it would be more spots and throwing people through weapons or tables or what have you. This was pretty much punch, kick, maybe once in a while throw you into a cage, but it but it was generally weaponless and spotless. Which technically when you think about that's why I quit back should technically be. Yeah, it, it exactly, should, yeah. It should be spot. Yeah. Uh, and also you sort of felt the like the hatred oozing off the screen between the two guys. Fun fact, that will also end up Magna TA is currently tested by Church step back. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I did read that in a review. 
Uh, again, I gave a match now. Uh, okay, the next... Uh, whew, this next match. Uh, and it is the Midnight Express versus Miss Atlanta Lively and Jimmy Valiant. I was supposed to shoot to part Miss Atlanta Lively. For those who don't know who Miss Atlanta Lively is... I just found out what's going on. It is Ronnie Garvin in drag. For those of you that know Ronnie Garvin. Uh, we, we've had bad experience with Ronnie Garvin match. Uh, what is he? I, be I believe it was him and Greg Valentine uh, that had that um, submission match. Submission match. Where they just kept on going for a pin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a terrible match. Yeah, I don't know why. I have a hatred for him. Uh, Friends wrestling. However, I'll, I'll give uh, Ronnie Garvin here the benefit of the doubt and say this is probably the best Ronnie Garvin match I've ever seen. Oh, you're saying he's better as a woman, all right? Yeah, he's a better wrestler as a woman. He's kind of, he's kind of like Andy Kaufman. He should be the woman's wrestling champion of the world. All right. Uh, well, anyway, this is, this is more of a street fight. Uh, for some reason, the Midnight Express are dressed in tuxedos for a street fight. Okay. Which is interesting. I don't, I don't really know what Midnight Express exactly entails, uh, but apparently it's tuxedos. Uh, the match was kind of sort of entertaining, but it wasn't necessarily that great. Uh, it, it wasn't that great at all. Uh, it, it, it seemed like everybody would start getting naked was getting undressed or <laughs> forcibly undressed which is kind of weird and the funny thing is this guy the guy in the review actually complains about Jimmy Valiant who be who had the moniker of in this match as the boogie woogie man uh, and literally what I mean everybody got undressed they stripped Jim Cornette who was managing the Midnight Express and had boxers with hearts on them. Who, if you weren't paying attention, could look like skid marks. Yeah, that, that, that's, it, it, it could look like that. I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah, I gave this match an F. Um, maybe it was, it was fun, then. it was a lot more fun then, but it's, it's not, it didn't really age well. Uh, it aged well? Yeah, exactly. It, 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 it aged like milk. Uh, and that's literally the finish how I remember it. Everyone just, just somehow got undressed. Oh, and, he, and I think everybody was bleeding too. Except Jim Cornette. Alright, the next match is a steel cage match. Uh, Ivan and Nikita Kola versus the Rock and Roll Express for the World Tag Team titles. Uh, I thought this match was also pretty good. Uh, it, was a, it was a bit more simple... Oh, like a bit more of a simple tag match uh, that you would see nowadays. Uh, rock and roll did played into their strengths. Uh, I believe it was Robert Gibson played the face of Carol. Oh, in this case. Yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, I believe it was Gibson. Not more. Yeah, not more. Which is all my work more. Yeah. I was like call him the working more spot. Yeah. Uh, however, I believe. Like right after the hot tag, uh, Morton just starts getting beat down. Ricky grabs the hot tag, rolls up uh, Nikita out of nowhere and gets the win. Uh, it wasn't really much of a cage match. Uh, like once in a while, a rock and a member of the Rock and Roll Express would get thrown into the cage, but other than that, it wasn't the cage wasn't really used. But the match itself was more of a simple tag match. Uh, so I ended up giving it a C. Uh, the next match is, in fact, the main event of the night for the NWA Championship. It was Ric Flair versus Dusty Rhodes. Uh, again, this was the match uh, in which it was hyped by the uh, Hard Times promo. Uh... This this guy's seen seen uh, past uh, Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes matches. I I really haven't. I, my knowledge is early like 
for WWF at this time. We would be only WWF at this time. The first Mania, the second Mania, things like that for me. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, so Joe ex expanded my... Wrestle Horizons, that's what I did exactly. people. I am the wrestling guru. But, but I felt that this match was actually pretty good. Um, I've never really known Dusty as the in-ring talent. No. Uh, he's usually the uh, guy in polka dots dancing with uh, Sapphire. But I thought this match was very good. Uh, Flair play, just played the uh, heel to perfection. Uh, Dusty got the sympathy by having his leg worked on. Uh, the finish came when the Andersons actually came out, distracted with the ref. The ref, somewhere in there, got a rush bump. Uh, it, I know I mentioned it like three times, it actually happened more. <laughs> uh, like, there was ref bumps to, to lead to absolute nothing in the show. Uh, but how, however, getting back to the match, uh, the Andersons come out, uh, Dusty takes care of Arn, uh, he gets hit by something with Tully. Tully knocks him out for some reason, or somehow. Uh, Flair goes for the pen. Ref comes back in the ring. One, two. Uh, Dust, Dusty uh, kicks out. Uh, Flair starts to pick him up and goes for the body slam. Dusty rolls through into a small package. One, two, three. Dusty is your new NWA champion. Again, I thought the match was pretty solid. Uh, I ended up giving it a big. Uh, the interesting thing to note for this, for this title reign for Dusty, is that it is actually a Dusty finish. Yes. That goes on for a couple nights, where I believe it was the NWA president decides to overturn the match, and Dusty wins by disqualification because the Andersons interfere. So, Ric Flair actually ends up still holding the championship, but you don't know that until later. Uh, because the show actually ends with Dusty celebrating. celebrating. Uh, and also add that to because I think I forgot to mention it, that this match actually had a very big fight feel to it, too. I, I think they encapsulated that very well. Uh, my overall grade for the show, uh, I actually ended up giving this a C. Uh, wow. Well, I've seen the car and I think that I thought the two matches that were the highest what? were going to be the two highlights. Uh, but I legit thought it was going to be F, 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 A or B. For yeah. Two matches, that's it. Wow. Yeah, it, it actually turned out a lot better than I expected. Uh, Which I can say is here for me. In the grand scheme of things, it's definitely not my favorite pay-per-view. However, if if uh, NWA from this time period came up, I I probably wouldn't look at it as, oh God, I gotta go watch old school Southern wrestling. Right. Uh, but I, but I actually had a lot of fun. Uh, I actually forgot to mention this <laughs> earlier when you said that Dust, that uh, Magna nice TA day. had a moniker. Yeah. Had a specific moniker. Yeah, and I said he had a different one in this one. He was the vastly po popular Magna TA. Okay. The vastly popular. So. America's heart. Well, anyway. <laughs> Starcade 1985, uh, a, a decent show. Uh, I'm actually surprised by it. Yeah. See, I knew I was picking you a decent show. Yes. You gave me crap on purpose. Uh, I had to sit for Sky Rings and Scott Porter match. Don't worry, I, I have an idea of what I'm going to give you for the for the next one. Okay. I did too. Oh no, yeah, but I have a feeling that I have an idea. Uh, down the. Not do it for this episode. Uh, see you on Friday with the uh, the weekly reviews and Elimination Chamber 2014, which is the last pay per view ever before the WWE Network. Yep. So. This was Patrick Young. This guy to my left is the vastly popular Joe Benito. And follow us down below on the at, on tour at, at the Pat Young Tour. I'm at the Joe Benito Tour Five at Russell IMB. Instagram on Russell IMB. We gotta hire somebody to update that more often. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know. You're the social media guy. Yeah, I'll handle Twitter, right? Uh, you're, you're the head of social media. I am. I got connections. And uh, and on our friends, I on Instagram. I'd be on photography with logo coming soon. 
Once his midterms get done. Yeah. <laughs> oh. We'll see you Friday night. See you then.